Hello everybody. So here we are again, PFI Online. This time it's for a very special occasion to present our Plant a Tree Award 2023. And many of you will know that we've had this campaign a number of years now. And what we normally do is to have the campaign and then PFI members are asked to choose which of the projects, which of the people have been really, really um, courageous to battle whatever disadvantages they have to further the planting of trees and their environmental activism is then supported. So we often say to our PFI members, please have a look around, see if there are any, is there anybody who would really, really benefit by a little bit of money just to help them on their way. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But first of all, as we normally do, we always start our meetings with a sacred attunement, a moment when we can share, in this case, share the upcoming festival of winter solstice or Yule. So, please close your eyes. So the shortest day came and the year died and everywhere down the centuries of the snow white world came people singing, dancing to drive the dark away. They lighted candles in the winter trees, they hung their homes with evergreen. They burned beseeching fires all day long to keep the year alive. And when the new year's sunshine blazed awake, they shouted reveling. Through all the frosty ages, you can hear them echoing behind us. Listen. All the long echoes sing the same delight. This the shortest day. As promise awakens in the sleeping land, they carol, feast, give thanks, and dearly love their friends, and hope for peace. So do we, here and now, this year, and every year. Welcome Yule. Having welcomed Yule, we noticed perhaps that we recognize the evergreens. As we'd moved from the summer into the fall, when the deciduous trees are losing all their leaves, we move to where the evergreens take a, take a prominent place. I'd like to invite Isabel to continue to tell us a little bit more about her system of divination and the sacredness of the trees. So Isabel, I'll hand over the microphone now to you. Yeah. Let, let, me, know, let me know when you'd like me to share your, um, your presentation, please. Thank you. Hello, beautiful people from beautiful world. I wish you all a very good new winter. So, speaking about trees, as we all know and daily observe uh, the news about climate changes that increased, and there are numerous problems in several sectors such as water scarcity, soil erosion, pollution, and many other set events that are transforming the multiple forms of life, not only trees, but all who depends from the trees. Trees have shown that they are unique beings and that they can be essential allies in the need to ensure the sustainability of life on Earth because they are a natural a technology. In fact, these life beings have a natural power of being efficient on the, on the environment. And they are sacred too because they have on their life, their existence, the four principal elements 
of life. Um, they help to regulate climate extremes, improve air quality, reduce surface runoff of rainwater, protect the flood, the soil for flooding, shelter and sustain the lives of many animals. I have a pine, not a pine, it is pepper here on my garden, and I have four families of birds here. Yes, and I know the new ones every year. It's 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 unique. So let us see, and when we have our trees with their flowers that bear fruits, that they give us food, and when that they their wood warms our homes. And we do the sacred fires and we do the fires for warmth. They are essential for life. However, sometimes or most of the times they're important. It's not understood by everyone. Still remember trees, just as the hair we breathe is essential. The fruit by the sun's heat, it's essential. The water saucer of life, it's essential. So the trees are also essential. And so we see the cycle of the elements, air, fire, water, and earth would not exist without the trees. It is very important to unite and raise awareness of this. In our association, EFI Portugal, under the name of Congregação Politeista, we have carried out several public workshops to educate people about the benefits of and the effects of the trees and the success of our eating for young people and families. It's named Generous Trees and conceived and presented by one of our members, Susana Garcia. It is, has been innovative and very well received by the participants. And as well as the workshop, Meditations with Trees, presented by myself, has opened minds and valued the importance of trees in our culture and our, in our pagan spirituality. But today, uh, I will ask Morgana to show the PowerPoint. I will speak about something very essential that is crying with the trees. Um, on the pagan scene, everyone knows that the Druids, one of the pagan neo-pagan traditions, they work with trees. They have already they have two sacred trees, but sacred trees came along the civilizations. Since the dawn of humanity, we see the tree as something sacred, important. Even on the Christian uh, religion, the first tree with Lilith and Adam and Eve, there is the tree, the importance of tree, the tree of knowledge. So, Divination with trees, it's essentially and basically a silent moment. A moment where you can use your energy and try to go away from the human world, open your sense, and try to communicate with the elements because the tree will not say nothing to you. The trees don't speak. But the trees understand ourselves when we get that connection with the tree and they answer with the wind, sometimes a bee, sometimes a bird. So doing divinations by trees, it's having a special moment of opening your sense. And even if you don't feel nothing that answers your question, I can assure you that you had five of 10 minutes of being in another dimension. So 
when we speak of divinations by trees, and we saw that the importance of trees along the civilizations, you have two options to choose your tree. Or you choose the tree because it's sacred and you want to feel the difference between a hawk or uh, ivy. Um, mistletoe, not ivy, sorry. <laughs> but ivy is sacred, but it's not the tree. Anyway, you can choose even a tree you don't know the name. You can feel that tree. So sometimes in on a garden or on a forest, trees, one in the middle of so many, takes your attention. So it is with that tree that you are going to work on. Uh, approach the tree, the tree, feel it. Uh, do one, two steps around the tree in silence. Because when you speak with the tree, you must use a very light voice like her. So you can be involved in that energy. Then, when you have already meet and felt with the tree. You breathe and you expire to the tree. It's the first step of doing the scrying. The power of your hair goes to the tree and then you pronounce your question. I want to know you have your question. And then take some steps away and see the east, the element air. Do a small salute to the element of east. Take around, go to the south, a small salute of the element of the south. Then go to the west. A salute to the element of water and then north, the earth element where the tree is and you are. So, north, you see the tree, centralize with the tree, ask again slowly your question, and then feel the answer. Sometimes the wind, if the wind goes to the left, means that the things are not on your direction. You must keep on. If the wind goes to the right, okay, go on your way. And see what happens on the elements of air, for example. Air, it's good news. Something that is coming. So, send email or... Try to give the communication if you have birds on the air. If you see some manifestation on south, south is prosperity. It's the fruits, it's the south, the element of fire. You must have your own symbols for the interpretation of what you feel. But if, if you see something on the west, West, it's water. It's something that it's going away. Water, sometimes it's meant with memories. So let the past go on. Be like the river and go on your way. And if you see a manifestation on the north, the north is something that is creating. Remember the seed inside the earth. And when it grows, it becomes something. Plant, tree, it's life. So something is germinated. Using the four quarters or what is happening, sometimes it's a smell, sometimes it's a bird, and you are focused on the tree, but you are seeing with your 
third eye, what is happening there. Sometimes there are people can see small beings, fairies maybe. I can share for you a moment that I have with my divinations of my trees. I always did this since I know myself. I speak with the sea and I speak with the trees. But I remember when I was, uh, when my child, she was four years old, I was teaching her to see the environment, to see the, the elements of the elements. And then we saw a potato running. Yes, a potato running. And she saw, look at the gnome, mommy. So the gnomes for me, they are not the beautiful things, but they are like tobaccos or potatoes running. It was so nice. And my daughter, she saw a fairy. Yes, I knew she saw a fairy. I never saw fairies, but I feel them. So when you close your moment of divination, sometimes you think you haven't have any answer. Maybe, but take a note about when you arrive home, take a note what we have what you have felt on that moment, maybe on next week, what you have written there, it's the answer. That's one of the ways. But even if you don't have an answer, I assure you, you had five minutes of a very good moment. And so it is so good that you will try it again. It's what I can say about definitions by trees. And to finish, don't forget to say, to do a salute to the courtes and thank your tree, giving the tree uh, water. You give water, so you finish your moment giving, feeding the tree with the element she always likes. Uh, so I think I have explained how to do scrying with trees. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have lots of trees since the beginning of our civilizations. And this is a seed of a growing tree, of course, the fruits that the trees gave us. And see how old and how memory some trees get on them. See the sequoias on the USA, how big they are. Of course, for me, all trees are sacred. And many cultures they have their own sacred trees, as the Baboa in Africa. I have my own sacred trees on my garden as um, a blood dragon tree. That the dragon tree, it's on the next um, slide, if you don't mind to show Morgan. She will do 20 years next next year. Uh, particularly, uh, I like the trees with lots of um, leaves, as the laurel too. Okay. Uh, this is how the importance of trees, not so sacred, but they are still very important on our daily life, and usually on weddings and festive, not only for pagans, but around the world people use trees just for marking an important moment of their lives. And ah, that's my dragon's blood tree. She will do 20 years next week, next year. And the yew tree, this one, it's on my garden too, and she has 30 years. The oak, it's not mine, but I have oaks to offer. BFI Portugal 
from Susanna F. Four little oaks to offer. We cannot plant them anywhere. We have to be in, uh, to see when we plant a tree. We have to see if it is well planted on the correct environment and if the property of other peoples will not go there and take off your tree. So it's important when you think on planting a tree to know where you are going to plant it. And see, why I thought I uh, saw this uh, picture very interesting because the movement of the energy she is doing with the tree, it's something I do. And I have written here the topics of what I have of what I said. And you it's very important for you to see a tree in, at springtime. It's at summertime, on the autumn, and at winter. Uh, meditations with trees comes with the force of nature at spring, with the fruits at summertime, with their retirement at autumn, and all the power of the raisins of the tree at winter. Of course, the evergreens, the evergreen trees are sacred because they are always green, and that means they have um, a meaning of life. And so, I think of being living on the Neolithic, for example, Paleolithic times, when. Some trees were evergreen and the others no, so they became very important. And the ancient humanity became to see that the trees have a connection with the divine. Even when we think on the past of our, our existence, the first fire that man held was from a tree. On a storm, the tree became a new fire. They get fire from the tin. Then this small moment was the huge uh, beginning of our civilization fire. And the, the first fire, we think it was seeing a tree on fire and holding that powerful element with them. So trees are so essential as our bones. And I finish here, wishing you a wonderful winter time and good luck and good health and your blessings. Thank you, um, uh, Isabel. That was very oh, my English. <laughs> I was very nervous about speaking English, but it went really, really well. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. For inspiration. I think people forget as well that um, we do use. You know, we are probably you know the tree huggers, and it's not for nothing that we're the tree huggers. Uh, but it's so important to have the contact with the trees, of course, at every different season. So thank you very much for reminding us of that. Without further ado, I'd like to move towards our the reason for this meeting, our awards ceremony. And I'd like to invite Atom and Meredith, who actually, um, as I mentioned before, the PFI members were asked to look and see if they could find a person or a group of people who would benefit by a little bit of money, as often Money is not everything, but sometimes we just try to help those around us who are really trying uh, very hard to plant trees, etc. And my honour all goes to now to PFI Hungary and Atom and Meredith. Um, Atom, would you please like to tell us why you nominated the person you're going to be introducing? So over to you now, uh, Atom. On the screen is Thomas. <laughs> but it's actually well, Atom well, and Meredith from PFI Hungary. 
Well, uh, first of all, hello everyone and blessings. And I would like to thank you for the honor, Morgana, of having the opportunity of introducing our nominee. Uh, with Prefi Hungary, we have uh, spent our time of trying to find the right person, but uh, after all, as it often happens, please allow me to share my screen. We decided to vote for uh, someone we knew the longest and someone we were sure to be able to use not just the money, but uh, also at the same time, the opportunity, the best possible. So the nominee of PFI Hungary is Linda Magyar, whom I knew from uh, actually my early 20s, so good 20 years ago. And uh, first, uh, we got to know her that uh, she used to go to Forrester's High School, and uh, then she uh, graduated from the University of uh, Hungary, one of the most prestigious universities of uh, the sustainable forestry. So she really dedicated her life to that. This is a picture of Linda from those times. So a good 20 years ago, one of her happy moments, and it shows everything of her like how much she likes winter. She's riding a horse like so often because uh, on the side of um, protecting nature devotedly, she also protecting animals. And uh, there's a particular breed of Hungarian horses that she's volunteering every uh, Sunday at uh, one of the riding schools of uh, helping breeding of these uh, um, endangered um, species of horses. So. This is the very reason she cannot be with us today. But um, from that time, good 20 years ago, she was already devoted protector of nature, uh, of every uh, living creature of it. And um, most importantly for her, the living environment. Now, this is a picture of her uh, garden right now, 20 years later, after a long uh, career, of uh, her devotion. She spent uh, her roughly 18 years in the United Kingdom working for different wildlife trusts and uh, in and outside of nature, she actually uh, spent her time of uh, trying to teach people that we do not have to mow the lawn so sharp and uh, short. We do not have to use all the chemicals because there are the grazing animals that can actually produce milk that uh, can actually be useful, and they do that land moving. So she uh, brought two acres of land, um, which is uh, now used by her as uh, totally self-sustaining. She is a solitary uh, vegan herself, and uh, she is taking care of these two acres uh, on her own. And this is a part of her uh, land, but the Smaller part is actually the meadow where the goats are grazing. The bigger part is, is a forest that is also being taken care by herself. Uh, she has peacocks and um, also she's got uh, other animals. So as I mentioned, uh, of self-sustaining um, garden, where the peacocks are, it's, it's actually they freely roaming. They are there to protect the other birds that Linda has. She's got uh, chickens and um, she also got quails and um, they laying eggs. Uh, Linda herself is a vegetarian, so she can 100% leave of what her uh, two acres, uh, woods and garden providing to her and also support her friends and neighbors, the fruits and uh, the other goods of her farm. Often uh, we get uh, presents as quail eggs or chicken eggs or uh, or our Halloween pumpkins from her as well. Um, now, you can see there's a very special picture. What most people would see here, it's uh, weed everywhere. But uh, this is, uh, is more particular than that. You can see the trees separated. So this is actually a grazing area for the four lamb and the goats. But uh, in the same time, you can see the fig tree, a peach tree, apple tree, all of these around separated. So there are no noisy lawn movers. There are nothing uh, like 
petrol or oil or gas operated uh, machines coming around. It's only the sheep grazing around the trees, which uh, allows her to provide 100% organic uh, fruit and um, vegetables as well, and also allows the natural white flowers blooming in her garden, the way that you see on this very, very picture. Anybody's garden could have these beautiful um, flowers, but well, most of us would choose to, to mow the lawn or cut the grass as short as possible. And uh, Linda's got the example of what happens if you if you actually don't cut the grass so short. And as you see, despite she's uh, not uh, taking every effort of uh, of uh, plowing and and mowing the lawn all the time, she still got all these precious fruits from this autumn. And she is taking care of her lawn where it's necessary in the front yard herself. Now this is Linda these days, uh, and uh, well. You can be <laughs> fear of the reaper because uh, she is not going to cut her grass by the the oil or the electric uh, lawn mover, but she's yet again taking care of that herself. And this way, can she can provide hay to her animals for the winter? And that is, of course, the necessary black cat in the background uh, called Misty. She's uh, as friendly as a familiar can be. Uh, now, here we see Linda in her other aspect. I mentioned earlier that uh, she's got her woods and uh, she's taking part of protecting that uh, precious um, Hungarian breed of horse that is uh, prone to extinction. So with the local riding school, she's volunteering to take care of these animals. And uh, I can say that with great pride, they appear to be succeeding. All her free time when she is not uh, working uh, in her job, that is also on, also on nature protection on an international level. She travels across Europe and provides education um, of uh, sustainable forestry to nature protection organizations uh, really all across Europe. She is uh, also a volunteer at uh, our group of the Order of the Golden Dragons and helps us with uh, actions like uh, cleansing forest, organizing um, actions when we actually do our very best to remove the uh, rubbish from forests and uh, help people do education sessions. She often invites the local high schoolers as well to her land where they can see a, a different lifestyle that we could have as people. And uh, of course, she's got her own little sacred place for fire and well, stone circle, what we can't see here around the smaller circle. Um, here it's being used for celebration and, and gatherings for friends. So she obviously left the really spot for that too on the big enough land. Um, this is the pumpkin patch. And as you see, as I mentioned earlier, she's not doing every effort for keeping it as clean from the other plants as possible, uh, yet the results are amazing. And uh, myself, you know, <laughs> I was, um, well, brought up in a little village myself. I always saw my parents, grandparents doing every single effort not to let any other grass, any other plant around the actual uh, fruit or vegetable you're trying to grow like this. They, they would have said that it's not being uh, looked after well, but Look at the results again. She clearly doing something good with them. Um, the product of the trees, she's also giving away to people in need. And um, she's got plenty on these two acres. This is an artistic picture of Linda and uh, her horse. It's uh, been uh, recently shot. And well, we cannot deny that she is a witch. <laughs> one of us. I would like to thank you for your attention and well, back to you Morgana, but this is our nominee Linda Magyar of Hungary. That was wonderful, thank you. And um, what I'd like you to do now, of course, is did you have um, a copy of the award certificate? Or would you well, like me to 
would you like uh, me to I would share like it? you to I would like you to put it up Morgan if that's possible please <laughs> I'm just going to see if I can find it so um, hang on hang on um that's the uh oh no that's I can't find it actually okay, um, okay I, just, just, just a second just a second I mean I, I got it all ready oh here we go this looks like it's something So um, what I'd like you to do now, Thomas, uh, is to let's hand over the award to Linda from all of us from PFI. And I'm going to show a little uh, video that she made in thanks. But uh, again, I'll be sending her a copy of this award. And so on behalf of all of us uh, at PFI, especially from PFI Hungary for the nomination. Thank you very much for coming up with an absolutely fabulous uh, lady. And I think she deserves everything. And I hope that she'll be able to appear in person at a later meeting. But without further ado, I'm going to now share. Hang on, hang on. Here we go. Um, I feel really honored. Thank you. And um, yeah, I think I would, I should really introduce myself and what's the main reasons behind of the nomination. So yeah, my name is Linda. Nice to meet you everyone, even remotely and not online. Um, basically, um, since my birth, but at least nine, um, age nine, I know that um, what is my profession. Um, I, I was born basically in a forester's hut near Budapest. And from that point, it was obvious what I'm going to do in my life. What is my passion and profession, uh, which, is, which is nature conservation. And later on, it became also sustainable forestry. Um, so at age nine, it was quite, I was quite mindful what I am going to do. Um, it started with the really obvious things, which it's for many other conservationists is the same starting. So bird watching and uh, feeding the birds and monitoring um, them. And then after that, I took on surveying uh, wildlife. And because we had uh, a few very serious issues at home with my family. Uh, my mother didn't really have time to to do anything with me. So what she did, uh, she took me out to a bird ringing station in Hungary uh, with really nomadic um, surroundings. Um, and that's basically where I grew up. <laughs> so basically, from that point, it was really obvious what I'm going to do in my life. Later on, I went to a secondary school, which was one of the best in Hungary. Um, and that was basically focusing on biological studies. After that, I went to uh, the historic university, forestry university of Hungary in Sopron. It's uh, at least 300 years old university with really deep traditions of forestry and studies and basically that's the point where I started mixing nature conservation studies with uh, sustainable forestry. After that I went, uh, I, I had a few minor jobs but after that I moved to the UK, uh, the United Kingdom and I spent eight years there working for um, quite a few organizations such as Wildlife Trust, uh, wetlands and uh, white file trust um, as well as the, at the end uh, I was working for the forestry commission as a trainer so I trained um, hundreds of foresters uh, in the entire UK and I, I trained them about sustainable forestry such as continuous cover forestry as well as uh, switching to productive broad leaves and many more subjects. So, but then COVID came and my, my, 
priorities sort of changed. I realized that career is not as important as family and friends and that if there is a crisis on, we should stick together. So I moved back to Hungary. And um, I just transformed my profession to something um, different. So at the moment, I am working for a, an international NGO uh, called CVEP for Biodiversity. And uh, we are working with many stakeholders, uh, lots of governmental bodies throughout the Central and Eastern Europe. Also, we are working a lot with the European Union um the european commission and um lots of other very important stakeholders and organizations uh, we are leading many projects and within that i lead two projects one which is concerning agroforestry um and the other one uh, is about nature and human conflicts so this is what i'm doing during my working time and after that um, I also have a small holding to look after, uh, which consists of obviously a house, an orchard, a veg garden, a hay meadow and a woodland. And now I also acquired another additional um, grazing area. It's altogether about two acres of land and it's um, and I'm doing it on a day to day basis. I do it completely alone with no help. Um, but sometimes my friends help me a lot, but basically I do the whole thing alone. And what is special about this thing really is that I receive people to look at this small holding and how I am managing it all alone and with, the, with regard of nature conservation as well as sustainable forestry. My woodland I am basically transforming it um, into continuous cover forestry methods. Um, and there is a high school nearby, forestry high school, where the students are coming regularly to look at what I am doing here. So basically, this is about me in short. Um, thank you very much for, for the nomination uh, for the NCs, Autumn and Meredith. Thank you very much. Thank you for PFI to to offer this award. I think it's it's great that you are you are recognizing people who are doing something for the environment. Um, so I'm very grateful for everyone who was involved in this. Um, and I feel really honored. And just one more or a few more words about what, how I'm going to use this award um, because I'm not spending it for <laughs> for general things. Um, so one one of my spe specialist area is sweet chestnut trees. I don't know how much you know about them, but they are basically trees which like acidic soils most of the time. But in Hungary, there are several lines of the species which are very interestingly growing in alkaline soils in orchards, in sweet chestnut orchards. Sadly, these sweet chestnut orchards in these areas are cut off by people. And um, so what I am trying to do is saving seedlings from these areas and bringing here to my small building and planting them for, um, for conserving that line of the species for future generations. So this is what I'm going to do with this award. Um, thank you very much <laughs> in the name of these trees and for everything. Um, thank you and thank you for the opportunity that I could do this not online. It helps me a lot um, because on Sundays I'm, I am unfortunately not available because I'm also um, helping out in, in a horse table where we are breeding uh, traditional Hungarian horses. Thank you very much. I hope you are all OK and you enjoyed my speech. Thank you. Bye. I will vote in Anaga in Anaga next year. No, isn't, isn't that amazing? She's, I think she's been doing some absolutely wonderful work. And I, I think as well from my other uh, connections with uh, Interface, um, of course, with URI, uh, Catherine knows uh, about uh, 
our interface partner, of course, PFI's interface partner is URI. And uh, we also have a lot of environmental programs going. So I think, Catherine, <laughs> I think we'll be seeing Linda in, in spirituality in the Earth CC or uh, in our environmental network. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but it's it just shows how um, as as a, a as a community we are also really really um, uh, engaged in helping each other. But it, so often these people just go on on scene. You know, it's. Um, it's so sad because so many people seem to be on internet, but they're not actually walking the talk. So thank you again, um, uh, Atom and Meredith, for nominating Linda. And I will be sending the the. If anybody's interested, it's not a huge amount. It's about two hundred euros. Again, PFI is also not a very rich <laughs> organization. So if you feel, and what I'd like to do right now is to say, this was a campaign for twenty twenty three. We will be starting, we will be starting a new campaign in a couple of days at Winter Solstice or Yule 2023 to Spring Equinox 2024. So the campaign, we always do it in the winter months. Um, everybody's donating to lots and lots of other people, but I hope what we normally do, of course, is to say everybody who is already a PFI member, if you extend your membership, then we will uh, donate two euros from every renewal to a, a kind of fund, the plant a tree fund. And anybody who becomes a member will also be taking part in that, of course, as well. And if anybody would like to make a donation, of course, that's possible as well. You don't have to be a member. Uh, as I say, members who are renewing will take part in the campaign and anybody who wants to become a member, of course, will also be um, partaking in this campaign as well. But if anybody wants to make an extra donation, of course, that's absolutely um, uh, brilliant. So I'll be um, uh, launching the new campaign in a few days. So I hope all of you will be able to see uh, that PFI really is trying to help not just the environment, but also helping those who are really, really um, spending so much time and, and often are not, you know, just need that little bit of extra monetary help. I say, um, hopefully, um, when we're sharing, we'll have one of the past um, award winners um, from uh, India. But we'll just go now to see if um, anybody, would anybody like to share a poem? At this part of the... Um, meeting what we do now is to say thank you very very much for everybody who's uh, uh, taken part in this campaign of course um and what we often do when we have seasonal festivals when we have meetings like this like, and now of course we've just been um, pointing out that it's uh, yule very shortly or winter solstice at least in the northern hemisphere and of course in the southern hemisphere it's um summer solstice but most of us are actually in the northern hemisphere so would anybody like to share a poem or something, a song? Maybe you've got a song. Would anybody like to share? I'm just going to check the chat. Um, uh, Catherine, have you seen anybody um, posing any questions in the chat? Can you uh, relate or relay any questions that maybe people have had? I, I can't see the chat at the moment. Um, there weren't any questions, um, but there were several uh, congratulations. Ah, oh, thank you. That's right. That's brilliant. I can just see the um, the the yeah. chat now. As I say, when I'm sharing things, I can't actually see the chat. So thank you very much for for coming to the meeting, and uh, certainly the congratulations we'll relay to Linda as well, of course. But uh, going back to my first, uh, has anybody got anything they would like to share? Or how do you celebrate Yule? How do, how do you use, for example, how do you use greenery in your celebrations? Does, would anybody like to share how they, um, Emily, how, how, how do you celebrate? <laughs> I'm Emily on the spot. But how, how, do you, how do you celebrate? I mean, do you have a Yule log? Do you have a, a, a Christmas tree? How, how do you actually celebrate 
using using greenery i never buy a pint a drink <laughs> <laughs> i have a pint on my can you hear me mm -hmm. yes sorry emily go Did ahead you... I... yeah it's, um... uh, it's my three Oh, there, there's, there's Isabel showing us her decorations. It's not the decoration. The tree by itself, it's a decoration. Yeah. We, we usually make, um, we usually make a, 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 a Yule wheel, but of course we won't be making that yeah. as actual celebration. I haven't time yet. Yeah. So, Emily, you, you were going to, to share something. Go ahead. Well, I've always had a tree every year. Um, a few years through my life, I've had a, a false tree, but usually I like to have a real Christmas tree. And that stems from when I was a child in the country, going to cut down the tree with my dad. Remember. Um, for Christmas time and bringing it in. It was a huge celebration doing all that. So I love the smell of the pine trees. Um, it's a fabulous uh, aroma to have in the house at Christmas time, Yule time, New Year, or basically through the whole winter season um the other things i have are holly um although i tend now not to have holly in so much unless it's got no berries on because i like to leave them outside the birds because our winters are sometimes pretty cold and they do need them sometimes um a lot of people are cutting down things and clearing things and um so the birds need all the berries they can get in the winter time um, ivy is another thing often used in the wreath um, to put in the door outside um, and I usually use ivy as well that hasn't got the ivy berries which is another thing that the birds like to have in the winter when it's when they're hungry um, so yes um, outdoors comes indoor quite a bit um, it, it's just a very nice year and as for the yule log um, I've just moved house this year and currently don't currently don't have a real fire. So there's a bit of a, a blip. Um, I normally have a fireplace and I start the Yule log is um, from the oak tree. And each year I try and save some of the fire that's left from the um, tree from the from burning the, the logs um, from the oak tree at Yule and saving them then for the next year to have a continuation from one to the next. Um, it just takes the year around, I guess. And it's just something just something nice to, to move forward with. But yes, nature certainly does come to life um, indoors in the winter time. So thank you. Thank you, Emily, for sharing. Has anybody got a poem they would like to share? Sylvia, uh, I didn't see you. I, I see you now coming, of course. Uh, would you like to explain where you live, Sylvia? Okay, I've been with you all the time, but uh, I switched my screen off. Uh, well, I'm from Germany, quite central, actually, the rather southwest. And, um, well, uh, it's always uh, a bit difficult to bring in pagan um symbols well we do it privately but uh, there's not much paganism around <laughs> i have to admit um we've got a yule log uh which is not very common in the area where i live but uh, we have got it for a couple of years now it's the same every year it's a uh, it's made of, uh, it's of oak and i decorate it for uh, for the yule festival and um Apart from that, we do have a Christmas tree because just I just love to have a tree around. I love the smell and everything. But since I've got four young cats, um, I have to keep it in the winter garden because otherwise they would ruin it. <laughs> and so we look through a window <laughs> actually to see the, the tree, but it's safe there. And um, but although um, uh, well, it's usually part of the, the the Christian celebrations here. I just love to have this tree around. I love the smell of it. And and uh, we usually decorate it in a very colorful way. And, um, and I just like to have it around. And Thank apart you. from that, it's, it's rather a family celebration. So uh, 
we do uh, my my husband and I uh, do a ritual for ourselves because we are doing different rituals. So we have got two parties actually, one for a, a private party of uh, for private ritual of my husband's, one for myself. And the Christmas ritual was was the rest of the family, but uh, that's we've got used to it. It's just like that every year. Thank you. Um, we're now coming up to the hour, and as I explained at the beginning of uh, before we came on onto the recording, um, after this we won't be going away. But what we'll be doing in a minute, I'm going to do in the official closing and then stop the recording. If people want to stay online for a little bit longer, then we can go to a, a, a more personal but not recorded session. So what I'm going to do is officially um, close this meeting again with a big, big thanks to Thomas and Meredith in Hungary for the nomination and uh, presenting us with uh, Linda, wonderful. As I say, I'll be sending her the, the award and uh, of course I'll, I'll be in touch with more details. The winter solstice blessings. May the longest night and the shortest day Bring rest to your mind and soul, I pray. May your guidance and may you find peace as the cycle of light will slowly increase. Embrace the magic that the darkness bears. Breathe deep in the chill and the shift in the air. May you always be blessed with a light from within and may well-being be yours as a new cycle begins. Blessings to you all and have a wonderful, wonderful Yule or winter solstice or whatever you call it. Maybe some of you have more Nordic sounding names or Scandinavian sounding names. Thank you very much to Ola and to Sylvia from, from Germany, from Sweden, from Russia, from Portugal. It was a small but very global group. So thank you very, very much for your time. And from Catherine from Canada, um, there is a recording of celebrating the trees from February. Uh, I will be posting that as well in the PFI forum. Uh, Catherine has a wonderful story about the tamarack to the sacred trees of Canada. So many, many thanks to all of you. Blessings upon you and have a wonderful Yule and we'll see you again in the new year. Thank you again. Blessings upon you all.